Welcome back again. This tutorial is going to be a follow-up from the previous tutorial that we did where we used um, uh, modifiers in order to style our protein. But this time I would like to focus on only one modifier that I think is actually quite useful because it's not only one that you can use for pure styling and the pure looks of your molecule, but also for uh, yeah, giving it more uh, a different perspective on how to look on it. Let's put it that way. So what I would like to show you today is how to cut the surface of your molecule. Um, I think this is quite useful, especially if you would like to show the topology of your uh, entrance of the active site, for example. For that reason, I used the same biomolecule as we had in the previous tutorial. I just did a bit of a different rotation in that case. I'm going to show you in a, in a second why. But all the other elements are the same. So we have a surface. If I hide that, we also see that there is a ribbon underneath it and also we have the cofactor on the in inside. I'm going to hide the ribbon for now, but I'm going to keep the surface because this is of course an essential part for that tutorial. Styling wise, you can also see that the scene looks quite uh, similar to a scene that we had before. I just moved the, the, li the light sources a bit, so instead of having two points light to the left and the right, I have a sunlight uh, coming from the top that has a bit of an unusual color, but yeah, that's the look that I'm going for. And then there is a second light source, which is in that case a point light on the inside. I'm going to um, yeah, talk about that a bit when we cut our protein, actually. Cutting uh, the surface is something that is uh, done quite easily. So we just need an extra element and this is an object that defines where the surface is going to be cut. And for that, I'm just going to use a simple cube. You can use any kind of object for that, but to have a nice and clean cut, a cube is obviously uh, yeah, the first choice to do that. So I'm going to just make my cube a bit broader to ensure that there are no, um, yeah, no tiny bits and pieces from my surface peeking out on the side. So I'm just going to make sure that I cover everything. You can be really generous with the size. The size of the cube doesn't matter. So it doesn't need to be a tight fit or anything. I'm also going to make it a bit higher just to be on the safe side. Um, the modifier that we are going to use is called Boolean modifier. So what that does is just it uses one object to cut the other one. You have two options to do that. In the modifier tab in generate, there is actually the third entry would be Boolean here as well. I use um, an add-on for that. The add-on is free. You just need, need to activate it and it is called pool tool. Yeah, so you just go to edit uh, preferences, look for pool tool in that case, tick the box and it should be available in the edit view here. So I'm going to focus on that. Uh, the outcome would be the same, no matter if you use uh, the modifier from the menu or pool tool in that case. We are going to use pool tool and in that case the selection is important. So what you do is you select the cube first and the surface second so that the surface has the lighter uh, orange outline and the darker orange outline is for the cube. And then you see you have a couple of options here. There is auto boolean and there is brush boolean. We are going to focus on brush boolean because this gives you the advantage that you, even if you uh, activated the boolean modifier, that you can still modify the position of your cube, for example, to find the perfect cut. There are four different options here. We are going to use difference most of them are yeah, uh, clear to understand and self-explanatory. So union would, of course, give you um, one object out of two. The intersect would give you the intersection of two objects, uh, like the name already suggests. And a slice would be something, um, it, the internal part is basically uh, yeah, sliced. Um, without further ado, I'm just going to apply the difference um, um, brush tool here and we see exactly what is happening and this is exactly what we would like to have so a clean cut of our surface but not affect our cofactor in that case I already positioned my biomolecule in a way that I know that I can see the active site entrance um, if this is not the case for you 
then don't worry, you can do that live. So in that case, you can just select uh, the cube, for example, and move the cube towards uh, your molecule. And then you see that you see like the, the slices that you can cut through. Um, I think in my case, uh, it, uh, the position was something around minus 2.8. That, of course, might be totally different for your biomolecule. But if I go to the front view, you see now that I see the entrance of the active site. I see the position of my cofactor and there is also a bit of topology of the active site. You can also select your cofactor and your surface, for example, and apply a bit of rotation to that so that you uh, find the perfect uh, alignment in that case as well. Make sure that if you have two objects that should be rotated at the same time, like in my case, the cofactor and the active si uh, and the surface, that you select both of them. If you would even like to include uh, the ribbon, then of course you should also include uh, the ribbon in your selection, because otherwise one of the parts would remain at the position and then the overall alignment, of course, doesn't, uh, doesn't fit anymore. I'm going to hide the ribbon because I think it makes the scene a bit confusing. Good, so let's jump into the rendered view to see how that actually looks like. And now you also see why I positioned one of my point lights into um, that tunnel here. So that would be the one. I actually think we can just duplicate that and put a second one on the entrance of the active site as well to have a bit of light going on there. So it's really like an internal lighting of a, it looks a bit like a, like a, like a cave. And, um, that would give you the option now to nicely show how your um, biomolecule, in that case the enzyme, looks on the inside by excluding parts of the, eternal, uh, of the external information. I'm going to jump back into the uh, solid mode to uh, show you a couple of other things. This is more now ab about styling. If you're happy on how your uh, alignment looks, you can also make that kind of uh, modifications permanent. So if you select your surface, go back to where we have um, the menu of the pool tool and say apply all, those modifications are going to make uh, permanent. If you say remove all, you can start over again. I'm going to select the surface here and hit apply all and then the cube is gone and we are left with the surface. So when you apply the pool tool modifier, you also have more control on how your cut, for example, looks like. So what you could do is go into edit mode and then all the cut um, yeah, areas are already pre-selected and assign a different color to that. So go into the material tab, just hit uh, plus here, then hit new and I'm just going to, to rename that area is cut and then you just need to hit assign in that case. And then if you leave um, the edit mode again and go into the rendered mode so that we see what's happening here, we see that our cut area has now a different material than the rest of our biomolecule. And by selecting, so that would be, I'm also going to rename that surface. And uh, if we select the cut, and for example, give that a glass shader, then we would have a transparent area here. So what looks a bit weird in that case now is how our uh, light sources are depicted. That is because, and I'm going to focus on the one on the left, that is because uh, that one is actually halfway inside of the um, of the yeah, surface on the inside. So I need to push them a bit to the outside or pull them out a bit more to still have uh, a lighter areas here, but not on the inside so that you don't have that kind of uh, strange halo look that you have here. So in that case, well, it's a bit uh, still a bit here uh, visible here, but we are going to fix that in a minute. Um, another option on how to avoid those kind of reflections here would be to give the cut actually a completely transparent material. So you can use um, transparency here and then you would not have a problem with the light source because you don't get the reflections that you normally would have for um, the glass shader that, that, that we used. So in that case, you see the nice uh, inside of your uh, of your biomolecule as well. So if I just 
hide the overlay then it's easier to see and um, if you would like to show that as well that would be an option if you would like to recolor the cut to the to the same as the surface you can just yeah adjust that again by using a principal shader for it and having approximately yeah having one uh, subsurface and then i think i had a pinkish color here as well so let's just duplicate that again I'm just I'm going to use the hex code for that to have exactly the same color and uh, then it looks like our previous visualization. So it really depends on what you would like to show. If it's more about the active side tunnel, then of course I would recommend something like this to have your cut area filled. If you would like to focus also on um, yeah, cavities or anything that you have on the inside of your visualization, then of course you can use the transparent option for your cut area. So I uh, still have my ribbon here on the side. It's just hidden in my scene, but I still would like to incorporate it somehow. And I think that works great if you give your cut the transparent look that we had before and then unhide your ribbon in that case because then your ribbon fills the inside of your uh, yeah of your surface as well and uh, yeah it's part of the complete visualization then of course to make it uh, yeah less prominent you can also give the ribbon a different look so for example give it uh, a more glassy look returning the roughness so that it's it's not highlighted that much and doesn't cover uh, too many objects you might want to play a bit with the positioning of your light here because you see on that area the light really is reflected by, by the glass shader so that might need to be uh, need uh, yeah a bit of tweaking by just moving the light sources around but apart from that i think now that would actually be a nice combination of the ribbon with our hollow uh, surface and with the cut that we created. So this is basically it for that modifier. As I mentioned, I really think that uh, that modifier is really useful also in terms of a more scientific visualization rather than just styling something because of the looks, because it really gives you the chance to show topologies, for example, of the active site tunnel or of your active site in general. With that, I would say I'm going to give that a final render and see how the outcome looks like. And I hope, as always, that this tutorial was useful for you and that you find an application for our Boolean modifier as well and that you create a nice visualization out of it. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Mm -hmm.